I suspect we could all agree on the following, what I'm about to share, and that is the dating marketplace today is an absolute mess. I mean, it really is a mess compared to what many people fantasize about and what many people hope for. And this is true for men and women alike. And I think one of the things we have to examine of why it's such a train wreck out there, and I'm, I'm calling it for what it is, because I think to fantasize about something, you know, so overly romantic, like the movies or, or Disney or whatnot, is absolute delusion in my mind. And I think the vast majority of human beings have a weak understanding of the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship, what it takes to create a healthy, happy relationship, and more importantly, being capable of being in a healthy, happy relationship. So why is it a mess right now? It's partially a mess because we have a significant percentage of the population that has weak emotional or weak relationship skills to begin with, okay? So right off the bat, we have a significant population with weak relationship skills, weak communication skills, weak listening skills, weak conflict resolution skills. And more importantly, we have a significant percentage of the population that operates from victim consciousness and not victor consciousness, which is one of the key elements to emotional maturity. Add to that that we have, again, this pool of people that are absolutely dysfunctional. You have a greater chance of ending up with a dysfunctional person than that person that has the emotional maturity or relationship skills to lean into a relationship. And then add to that the fantasy that chemistry equals relationship success. I'm going to repeat that, that chemistry equals relationship success. And many of people are, are in this fantasy uh, because there's a deception associated with chemistry because most humans don't consider the more important factors to a relationship, and that's shared values, blendable lifestyles, and as I've been talking about, emotional maturity. So let's talk about this emotional maturity for a second because one thing I've observed uh, it, for those of us in midlife, and if you're in midlife, that's after baby making years or before retirement. I always say my, my audience tends to be 42 to 69. Those are the women that tend to hire me most. By the way, there's a link below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. You can schedule a free discovery call. One of the things I've observed in midlife is that roughly 75% of the single population or the population that is actively in the dating marketplace over 45 years old are divorced human beings. And with a significant percentage of divorced human beings, you have a lot of dysfunctionality depending on where they are in the spectrum of their divorce. And what I mean is, are they in the beginning stages of the divorce? Are they in the final stages? Do, are, they, are they divorced? And, and then do they have a contentious relationship with an ex or do they have a contentious relation throughout? Or, or maybe they're just going through garden variety midlife crisis. Maybe they have issues with their children. Maybe they have professional issues going on in their life. Maybe they have health issues going on in this life. This is true of men and women alike. So what I've observed in the divorce category is this rise in what I call um, dating as a replacement for therapy. I'm going to repeat that, dating as a replacement for therapy. And what I mean to say is there is a significant percentage of people that are, are using the online dating platforms to connect with people to as a form of therapy. And what I mean is as a temporary, actually not even therapy, as for some people, it's self-medication. So instead of doing drugs and, you know, drugs and alcohol, they're using the online method to connect to soothe whatever pain is going on inside of them. And I know this because I was that guy that literally was addicted to the online dating process to soothe the pain I was going through after a divorce and then after losing my significant, my quarter million dollar a year job. And I was addicted to the online dating process for over a decade. So I shared with you as a form of therapy why that's so critically important to understand is a lot of men in particular, this is true of women as well, but men in particular finally in midlife feel like they, we've, we've stuffed our emotions for so long. And if we've got a viable prospect at the other end of the phone, we might vomit 
all of our insecurities, our fears, our weaknesses, just so we can feel validated by another human being. And to many of you women, you think this is music to your ears. You're like, oh my God, he's being vulnerable. He's being insecure. He's so emotionally mature. And yet all he's doing is vomiting his feelings because he's never practiced, he's probably never gone to therapy and actually have done some genuine introspective work. So one of the reasons why I wrote my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. There's a link below to get a copy of my book. Why, why I pitch my book so often is a journey to begin shifting out of this pain and suffering many people are feeling as a catalyst to begin a process of personal development work so you can get out of the need of using online dating or talking to people incessantly as a form of therapy. And I want you to think about this. Even people who do therapy oftentimes just go so they can get someone to listen to their problems and feelings and oftentimes validate them, but not with any real, genuine, forward progress help. This is why when I think of my coaching, I'm going to be candid with you. I look at all of you human beings out there as a bunch of children as a bunch of children. And the way I scream and yell in my videos is because I look at you, I look at every most everybody in the dating realm as children and I'm your parent scolding you for your stupidity. And I say stupidity because it blows me away, in women in particular, how often you give your power away to men. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna call you out on your shit. It's time to it's time to let go of the narrative that you can just sit back in your feminine energy and just let some man claim you. It is time to step into your empowerment. And one in particular is speak your truth to a guy instead of the fear of expressing yourself that he's going to run away. And this is why I've been lately continually recommending this book, Why Men Love Bitches. And bitch stands for babe in total control of herself, E.S., it's an empowerment book so you don't fall to the you don't fall in this trap of becoming a guy's therapist. Because as 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 music to your ears this might be, it is setting you up for failure. It's setting you up for the it's you're going to see the signs shortly thereafter of how he's probably going to leave you at some point. Now the other sign and what I'm about to share really really fucking sucks. I'm just sorry. I've got to call this out. But men experience, okay, so we all know that men are hunters and they, they love to hunt and they love the chase. Of course, you guys are naive, like we're really hunting around, like I want a relationship. I'm hunting for a relationship. Instead of going, guys hunt for sex, myself included. Listen, I'm no, I'm no angel here. I try to have sex on the first date. I'm just, I'm a horny guy that is sometimes impetuous. I mean, the chemical reaction of lust and limerence can make me absolutely the shark's eyes roll over and I want to go for the kill. So I'm no picnic here. I'm, I'm, I'm a typical male. But oftentimes when we're chasing sex and we, we, we basically uh, experience it, in other words, we have sex with you, what happens next, and you're not going to like this terminology, but I pulled it off of the internet, so I'm going to share it with you. Oh, it didn't show up. Hey, Google, look up post nut clarity. Your guys are going to die on this. So post nut clarity defined on the Urban Dictionary, immediate clear mind mindedness or soberness an individual gains after orgasm or orgasming or busting the nut. The concept of post nut clarity has been um, bandied about for years in many different contexts. So why I'm sharing this with you is a man's real feelings for you show up after sex and it's almost binary. He either likes you or he wants to run the other direction. And the problem, okay, let me, there's three actually. Okay, I apologize. There's three. He either likes you, which you all wish was the case. He either runs away, which is most often what happens, or he wants to go for repeat performances because he's basically a user or a, sp a spend spender. And if you're not familiar with my um, my user spender category, I'm just going to show this to you real quick. Um, users are the 
uh, roughly 20% of the population. This is not a fact. This is merely an opinion. These are the love bombers, the players, the, the gold diggers, the, um, the entitled people. And the spenders are those people that want companionship, connection, and sex, but they have no real direction in a relationship. So sometimes these people that are, and by the way, the growers and the builders are the ones who want genuinely want a relationship. Okay. So coming back to you could be with a user spender who meet, may want to keep coming back for more. Those are the usually the guys that are really dysfunctional, needing your therapy. So they'll keep coming back for more because the therapy and they get to have sex with their therapist. So you might be thinking, OK, what's the solution to all this? Well, first is to recognize the signs that he's about to leave. And we're going to share that right now. So I'm going to pull out my trusty notes. OK. And um, and when I say seven signs, it's over with them. Walk away now, or at least be prepared. Pay attention to these signs, okay? So um, number one, he starts acting irritable and dismissive towards you. He starts acting irritable or dismissive towards you. Why don't you think about this? Most guys that are users, they're in it for the short run. The guys that are the spenders, they're going to be on their best behavior for about, if you're lucky, six weeks at best. But after that, if he's if he's busted a nut and you're not the one, he might, but he doesn't, he doesn't have the courage to speak up and say that. He might start acting irritable or dismissive or worse, controlling to you. These are signs, irritable dismissive or controlling are signs that he's getting ready to leave. These aren't absolute. There could be issues going on in his work life or his uh, his previous home life. There could be something going on, but that's usually a sign he's getting ready to leave. Number two, he forgets important things in your life, whether your birthday, your kid's birthday, maybe something that's happening in your family. I talked to a woman the other day where she was with a man who literally her her father died and he was more concerned about his work than caring for her. He's like, oh, I forgot kind of thing. I'm like, how do you forget something like that? And this is common. When he starts to forget important things in your life, that's usually a sign he stops caring and he's getting ready to leave. Okay. Or it's over with him. Number three, he stops spending money and it's uh, he stops spending money on you or worse, he starts turning it around and wants you to spend money on him. In other words, you're paying for the dates all the time. You're the one covering bills in his life. When you start seeing that happening, that's a sign that he doesn't he doesn't respect himself anymore. And if he doesn't respect himself, he can't respect you. Number four. This one sucks. He stops having. Se well, this might not suck, but he stops having sex with you. A guy that, listen, most men, I mean, listen, at, listen, even at my age, I'm not as virile as I used to be, although I am a horny son of a bitch. So, but if, when I stop having sex, it's either the game's over for me, at least that's happened before, or, I mean, I've got to go seek some help. But um, if he stops having sex with you, that means he's detaching from you. And he's, that's most likely a sign, again, unless there's some real medical issue going on. Uh, that he's getting ready to leave. Number five, he picks fights over nothing. He picks fights over nothing. He gets defensive or worse, he starts gaslighting you. And gaslighting you is dismissing your feelings, turning everything around and making it your fault whenever you have a, when you have a concern that you bring to him. He wants to turn it around, he gets defensive and he picks fights over nothing. That's usually a sign coming back to the irritableness that he's just not respecting the relationship much further. Number six, he stops talking about the future and the beginnings like, oh, we're going to take this trip together. Oh my God, I can't believe how you're going to fit into my life so perfectly and blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden it's like, what happened to the future? What happened to those words, we, we were going to do this, we're going to do that. When you stop hearing the we, you stop hearing the future, that's a good sign. It's most likely over for him. And last but not least, number seven. He no longer puts effort and it feels like you're chasing him. I'm going to repeat that. He no longer puts in effort and you're putting the effort because, and then you're going to feel like you're chasing him. 
Folks, when something feels off, it usually is. When a relationship starts feeling off, I'm a big proponent. How do you protect yourself from this? First and foremost, ladies, if you follow my channel, you know, before the penis goes inside the vagina, read the books, Eight Dates, and read chapter one together. That's at least your first assignment. Read this book. Understand the mechanics to a healthy, happy relation. This is by John and Julie Gottman. Purchase their other book, The Seven Principles to How to Make a Marriage Work. Why you need this is so you can understand the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. In addition, you're dating, most of the time you're dating total strangers. So before you have sex with a guy, I'm a big proponent that you start utilizing what's called my dating vows, my dating vows. And I'm going to read it for everyone. I'm posted on the screen real quick. I'll post it in the description when this broadcast is over. If you've ever heard the saying, women are the gatekeepers of sex and men are the gatekeepers of commitment, the dating vow is basically your antidote to eliminate 90% of the looky-loos out there. And the dating goes vow, vow goes like this. You both say this. You, say, you each say it to each other. Number one, I agree to, this is when you, before you have sex. I agree to explore the process of getting to know you with the intent of to, declare, to, to declare something serious in three to six months. Number two, I agree to be monogamous sexually while we're having regular sex together. Number three, I agree to not actively seek to meet or date others while we're in the dating process, which includes taking down my dating profile if you met on a dating profile. Number four, I agree to speak up if this isn't working for me versus pulling back, ghosting, or disappearing. And number five, I agree to invest regular time in the process of getting to know you, which looks like spending a couple days a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, maybe spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal and professional life, and intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy. 90% of men will bail. Because there are thousands of women who will have sex with, without any commitment or agreement whatsoever. In fact, if you all women band together and put your chastity belts on, you could solve this problem in the next 90 days. But in the meantime, try this. I have clients and women emailing me all the time saying, Jonathan, thank you for giving me, for, for drawing attention to me the importance of being empowered being empowered, standing in your power. Because look, it's a fucking shit show out there. It's a fucking mess. And the sad reality is 80% of you aren't going to get a guy. It's And 80% of guys aren't going to get the girl or they're going to have temporary short-lived experiences. We are seeing these days multiple, multiple relationships for people after they've gone through divorce. So why I created my coaching program is to help you sift through the 80 that aren't good candidates. By the way, schedule a call with me if you want to learn how to do that. We work, we create questions based on your personality to determine if they're a good fit for you. Because let's read what this mug says is, sometimes you forget you're awesome and this is your reminder. I want to remind you that you have to choose you in this process and stop being cavalier and naive. That is the reason why it takes intentionality. And this might seem intense, but you don't have time to fuck around. The days in front of you are much shorter than the days behind you. Get busy living or get busy dying. That's my, my message to you all. All right. I think you got the gist of where I'm going. The seven signs he's, he's ready to, he's uh, it's over for him. Run now is my suggestion. All right. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below. If this resonated with you, hit the like button, share this video, subscribe to my channel. If you're brand new to my channel, I'd be so grateful. Uh, check out all the links below as well. This is time for our Q&A. Uh, for those that are on the live stream, if you know my format, if you have a question in the chat box, write the word question, then post the question thereafter, or you can purchase a super sticker, super chat. All of the monies from the Super Sticker Super Chat goes to a scholarship fund in the name of my son, Connor Asley. That's a picture of him right there. 
He passed away almost four years ago. And in his honor, I decided I created a fund to donate to causes like the Hoffman Process, Insight Institute, and to help those defray the cost of personal development for them. So I'd be honored. Use the little dollar sign in the chat box. And if you're listening to the audio recording for this, no worries. Uh, there's a, you could, um, you could send in a donation. You can find me on PayPal. You can find me on Venmo if you'd like to send a donation. All right, let's jump in and take questions. What do we have here? Does anyone have any thoughts on uh, dating as the new form of therapy? Let's talk about that. All right, Happy Girl says, question, what did I miss in a nutshell? Sorry, late to the party. I, I need a more specific question. I'm not going to repeat all this. You can come back and watch the replay. Um, all right. Celestial says, thank you, happy girl, by the way. Celeste uh, says, question, what do I do if the guy I'm dating will not allow me to break up with him? He's stopping by my house and using other apps to talk to me. You can block him from your life. You can contact the police and put in a restraining order. You can, I mean, that's the two things. Go to the police and, um, you know, schedule, get a restraining order and block him on all. By the way, these days you can easily block people. So, you know, you can easily block people. So, um, or, and get a restraining order. That would be my, my suggestion for you. All right. Hope that helps. Thank you so much. All right. Brenda says, how do you weed out the guys that want a therapist rather than sharing? It, take, it, it takes, this is where my private coaching comes in. Again, schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. This is a more complicated question. One of the things I do in my coaching is something called uh, radical honesty, pre-qualifying your prospects. So that's something we go into my coaching practice a little bit more deeper. So um, all right, let's see what other questions we have. Let's see, let's just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Uh, by the way, Lulu says, Jonathan is Friday night therapy. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Sandra. All right, do we have any more questions? Oh, Kimberly's in the house. Well, we're gonna take uh, we're gonna take uh, Michelle's question first. Question. He said he needed time to deal with his past pains and losses. How long do I give him? He proposed we stay platonic friends for now. It's not about giving him time, Michelle. It's not about giving him time. You don't give him time. What you do is go live your life. And I would say the average man needs somewhere between two to 15 years to get through the tunnel. Now, Alison Armstrong, who's uh, got something called the PAX program, talks about something called the tunnel. And the tunnel is that space when a man goes through midlife crisis, when a man is going through midlife crisis, uh, if he's not actively seeking therapy, if he's not doing personal development work, then it could take up to 15 years. I've been at this for 15 years. I'm still just just getting out of the tunnel and I do a shitload of personal development work. So do you want to wait 15 years? Do you want to wait two years? Or do you just want to go ahead and live your life and let him go? The fact that you're even contemplating him means he has your power. Take back your power, put yourself out in the dating marketplace and go find someone who is emotionally uh, healthy enough to be in a relationship. And again, it could take two to 15 years is pretty much traditional. If in two years, if he's doing intense, intense work, which I highly doubt the average person does about this much work in their introspection and personal development. So that's my suggestion for you, Michelle. Does that help? I hope it does. All right. Kimberly's in the house. Question, would you feel comfortable dating a girl that comes from a billionaire family or would you be intimidated or uncomfortable? <laughs> so I've dated two women that have worth uh, well over $30 million. Um, and, um, and mostly inherited money. Actually, one of them inherited 10 million and then she parlayed that by another 20 million. She's just a brilliant business person. I, I really adore her. I adore both. Um, 
I was never intimidated by the money, but money can be a very sticky thing. Sticky thing? It can be a very complicated thing in relationships. So no. And if I date, fuck, I'd love to date a billionaire. I mean, isn't Jeff Bezos' wife's available? <laughs> fuck, who wouldn't? I would love to fly on private jets and sleep in gorgeous private islands. I mean, I am not intimidated by whatsoever. Now, if she expected me to pay for everything, we got a little bit of problem. But I have no problem whatsoever uh, dating someone who's a billionaire. I think it'd be fucking cool. Um, my my big crush is uh, is um, oh god, what's her name? Uh, oh god, I just went Kate Beckinsale, and I looked, and I think she's worth about eighty to hundred million. So I'm cool with that too. So anyway, Kimberly, thanks for your question. I appreciate that. Not intimidated whatsoever. I think it'd be fucking fun. All right. I saw Patricia had a question. Okay. Or Pamela, excuse me. Question. What if he runs away but comes back? Doesn't show any of the seven signs. We don't have sex. I have straight up asked him if he's seeing and dating anyone else. He said no. Have been been to his house. Um, well, what about it? I mean, what do you want to know? I mean, should you invest in it? You know you got to go with your gut here. If you haven't, if you have not, okay, look, number one, don't give your power away to him. Number two, if he wants your vagina, then read this book together to determine if you guys are a fit for one another. That's my invitation for you. By the way, there's another book. I, I, this is a book by the, uh, the, uh, owner of eHarmony or the founder of eHarmony. It's the book is called Two Dates. It's by Neil Clark Warren. Not that I'm endorsing eHarmony, but what I like about this book is it really, it talks about the importance of compatibility, the importance of compatibility. Most of you guys are delusional, not delusional, you're in a fantasy because you believe chemistry equals relationship success instead of understanding that shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity is the most important thing. So how do you determine his emotional maturity? You start reading these books together before he gets to fuck you again to determine if he's legit. That's what you do. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Hit that thumbs up. Pamela. Hey, sweetheart. Question. Since I've ghosted my ex, he's now inviting me to go places with him. Once again, this is not a question. Folks, one of the things that piss men off is when you say you're going to ask a question and then you don't ask a question. This pisses this guy off, okay? Oh, God. Ladies. All right. Brenda says, okay, thanks. You're welcome. Heather's in the house. Oh, is this a question? Oh, that wasn't a question. Excuse me. Corny Cobb has a question. Question. Do you think attractive people are more likely to be users or spenders or do they get used by one? That's an interesting question. I think the benefit of being an attractive person is you get more options than the unattractive person. That's probably one of the benefits. I think I'm going to be candid with you. Weak people get used. Weak people get used. I know a lot of drop dead gorgeous bitches. Why men love bitches. And they don't get used because they are in their empowerment. When you are in your power, you can't get used. It doesn't matter if you're drop dead gorgeous or, you know, I was going to pick on an actress, but I won't go down that road. Um, so that's my opinion on that. Does that sink in? I hope so. All right. Thanks for your question, Corny. All right. Let's see. Don't forget, write the word question, then post the question there after. KK writes, question. I'm great at giving authentic attention. I'm cynical when others give it to me. Is there a balance to understanding the difference? Hmm. I'm great at giving authentic attention. I'm cynical. So there's most likely a wound in your life that makes it difficult for you to receive love. And if you're incapable of receiving love, then on some level there's an imbalance most likely that you're giving because you're avoiding receiving. I am. This is just my rough, you know, psycho 
uh, pseudo psychology right here. Now, I know you don't agree with me. You probably have a different perspective on this, but I would say that you definitely have, uh, I suspect you have a hard time receiving. There's probably a wound of abandonment in your life or a fearful avoidant going on in your a fearful avoidant attachment style, possibly, which or maybe you could be anxious as well, but it's easier to give than to receive. It's, you know, we've often heard it's better to give than receive, but the reason why people give is because they have a hard time receiving. And ultimately, you're going to have a difficulty being in any relationship until you heal the wound, go back to the root, heal the wound of what causes it, makes it difficult for you to give. That's my invitation for you. All right. Thank you for your question, KK. Deborah. Question. I understand all the principles involved in a successful relationship. There, there just aren't any suitable candidates to pick from, at least in my experience in my age group. Okay, once again, this isn't a question, but I'll extrapolate from this. Oh, wait. Involved, there aren't any to pick from. Again, that's not a question. So, first off, is that true? There's absolutely zero people to choose from. I'd like to think I'm worthy, okay? So th so now there's at least one, and I know dozens of men in just my general vicinity. I know dozens of men that are suitable candidates, and that's just in my general vicinity. So what is blocking you from seeing that? Maybe your standards are too high. Maybe you have impossible standards that a man can't meet. That could be possibly it. Or it could be that you're running in. By the way, remember I said before, 80% of the population is dysfunctional. And most everybody thinks they're in the 20%. Maybe you included. So stop. Here's the thing. If I all of a sudden start saying, if I said all of a sudden, um, you know, silver Mercedes Benz, uh, silver Mercedes Benz, and you start to drive, all of a sudden you start seeing silver Mercedes Benz. So in your, in maybe your psyche is you don't see it because it's not in your consciousness. So how about trying this? There is an abundance of suitable candidates for me to, to be in relationship. There's an abundance of suitable candidates for me to be in relationship. It's raining suitable candidates, raining great men. It's raining great men. Does anyone know the song, It's Raining Men? It's raining great men. Change your narrative and you'll start seeing more of that. Got it, Deborah? All right. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, wow. We got lots of questions. All right. Bear with me, everyone. FL says, it's annoying for me too when people put a question and then make a statement. Exactly. You ladies drive me fucking nuts. And you wonder, listen, I'm sorry to call you out on this ship, but you wonder why we men have a challenge with you because you don't get to the fucking point. We men like women that start with the point. Then you can give us the fucking story that goes after that. But you guys vomit all this shit. And then you wonder why guys don't want to be with you. <laughs> all right. Thank you, FL. Question from Lisa. Why do guys not like a label or relationship? He got divorced at the end of 2020 and, is, and has issues communicating with his kids. We've been seeing each other since November because he doesn't, it's not, he, he uses that as an excuse because you're not the one. You're not the one. You're just, he, look at coming back my spender. Okay, ladies, users, spenders, growers, spenders, they seek connection, companionship, coupling, and sex. No direction, uncertainty, fearful, usually have a dysfunctional life. He's just spending time with you. you. He gets your vagina for free. He doesn't have to buy the cow. He doesn't have to lease the cow. He doesn't even have to go to the farm. He doesn't even have to pick the weeds from the farm. He gets all his milk for free because you're allowing a spender to get the cookie, as, as Steve Harvey would say. So stop giving the cookie and you might see a shift. But let me tell you something, it's bullshit. Any guy that says, I don't like labels, it's because you're not the one. 
believe me, folks, you know, I recently met someone uh, in the long distance and I like her and I'm exploring it. I'm declaring that I like her. I'm declaring I'd like to explore something with her. And if we agree to it, I would call her my girlfriend happily. I don't like labels. That's like, that means I don't like labels simply means you're not the one. I'm sorry. This is tough medicine. I'm giving you a hug because this sucks, but that's what that means. It's bullshit. And part of this bullshit is because he's going through dysfunctionality. So he doesn't have a good foundation underneath him to even be in relationship. And by the way, the average woman waits five years waiting for a dysfunctional man to grow up. And then the relationship is over. So cut your losses. All right. Or have make, I'll call him on your behalf. Hire me as a coach. I'll get on the phone. I'm your big brother. I'm going to say, look, motherfucker, what are you doing here? You get the vagina for free, but you're not going to give her the label of girlfriend. That's fucking bullshit. Should I come over and kick your ass now? <laughs> I would do that, ladies. I would actually do that for you as part of my coaching. Corny Cobb says, personal question. Do you have any favorite family recipes to share? Uh, would you ever do a cooking live stream? So, folks, thank you for that question. There's a picture of my mom and dad. That was when they were in their 20s. My parents were married 66 years before my mother passed away four years ago. Oh, God, five years ago now. I miss her cooking. I miss my mom's cooking. She, uh, My heritage is Turkish. Both of my parents were from Istanbul, Turkey. And I haven't had a good Turkish meal in five years. And I miss her. I miss her dolma. I miss her mujvir. I miss her. Oh, God. Um, God, they all escape me right now because I'm emotional over this. I just miss my mom's cooking. Tomato rice was one of my favorites. Uh, uh, Potlajan was one of my favorites. Um, and I miss my mom's cooking because she cooked with love. I mean, for her how she demonstrated love was through food. And so she didn't have recipes. She just closed her eyes and put shit in a pan and it would just taste fantastic. So you brought back a lot of memories for me. I miss her cooking. Uh, uh, Dernar kebab, uh, there was kebab. There was, uh, I said dolma. I said, um, I didn't like, I wasn't a big baklava fan or anything like that. So anyways, thank you for that. I do miss, and so I don't know how to cook any of her recipes. She, she never taught me. Uh, no, I would not do a cooking show, by the way. <laughs> Question. I I was told on a date that I was perfect, but after he we found, after we found we had a lot in common, he said at the end of the date, we're not compatible. What happened here? Well, but, but I don't get the but. He told me it was perfect. We have a lot in common. And at the end of the date, we're not compatible. You know what? That was his just way of saying you're not the one. Listen, folks, it's interesting. Remember I talked earlier about post-nut clarity? You know, after we ejaculate, how we really feel about a person really starts to surface. And his, his reason for non-compatibility what I'm getting at, what I was getting at, what I'm about to say is feelings aren't facts. Feelings aren't facts. And the hard part in the dating process is sometimes when you like someone, it's hard to quantify. It's not like it. I've talked to so many women say to me, Jonathan, this guy is great on paper. We're so compatible, but I don't feel something for him. The bottom line is this. Sometimes we like people for reasons we don't understand. Sometimes it's love attachment. Sometimes it's imago. Sometimes it's biological. It's chemical. It's hormonal. But at the end of the day, sometimes it's a non-quantifiable feeling. And he's just cutting his losses because he's not feeling it for you. So it has nothing, you know, it, that's why it's chemistry, shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity that takes a relationship to the next level. And you know, sometimes we roll the dating process is the roll of a dice. It's roll of the dices. And there's no guarantee with it. But thank you for your question. I really appreciate that one, Karen. That was a good one. All right. 
Payman says, question, what's your advice on a lady who, who's still virgin, 39, realistically high stand, realistic high value standard, has been dating online for three years, no luck on a healthy committed so far, unfortunately. Oh, that's a good one. Um, so sex is part of the decision-making process for commitment for about 99% of men is my instincts. So you're going to literally have to find a man. Wait, what's your question? Um, oh, well, no, your question wasn't about marriage. I messed this one up. So you have realistic high standards, been dating online. You know what? Um, do a better job of pre-qualifying people, number one. Um, yeah, just do a better job of pre-qualifying. You know what? Ultimately, it's going to take a better job of pre-qualifying their emotional maturity. And ultimately, it's about building trust with each other. It's about building trust. So what is trust? Trust is, isn't just about fidelity. Trust is, does this person care about my feelings as much as my own? Does this person have my best interest in hand as much as my own? That's trust. So it, and trust is built through social activities, hobbies, mutual interest. Let me repeat that. Trust is built through social activities, hobbies, mutual interest, spending time with family and friends. Folks, you should be reading this book, Talking to Strangers, Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. When you're meeting total strangers, it requires a different element of understanding to really get to know a person. It takes a minimum of 100 hours of face-to-face -face time just to build the first layer of trust. So my invitation for you is to have more radically honest conversations with people because the only way you're going to build trust is through, excuse me, build that level of trust or safety is what we're really talking about to feel safe is to really get to know each other beyond the, how's your day going? Did you have a good day? I hope you had a good day. By the way, how was your day? Have a nice day. Everybody's so focused on the day and not about what's going on here. At least that's my invitation for you. Perlman, thank you. Uh, Payman, thank you so much for that question. I really appreciate it. All right. Ah, God, we have a lot of questions tonight. I'm going to try to rapid fire it. Um, question. What do you suggest with hot and cold behavior with someone who you've been friends with and he's expressed his love but doesn't take it the relationship to the next level? Karina, are you having sex with him? If you're having sex, that is the next level. By the way, hot and cold is usually a sign of dysfunctionality going on in his life. So the ground underneath him probably isn't solid. And you're like, well, I'm an enabler. I'm going to help him through his tough times, you know. I'll be there for his tough times. And I'm going to hope that magic fairy dust will change everything. <laughs> Karina. First off, until the next level is the, the dating vow. If he hasn't made a vow to you, then he shouldn't get your vagina. And by the way, if his behavior is hot and cold, it's because he's just not that into you enough. I'm sorry. Men who are emotionally mature, have good relationship skills, don't act hot and cold. You know, we all have temporary schizophrenia, okay? We have temporary brain farts, okay? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking inconsistent, consistent, inconsistent behavior is from people that don't have a good foundation underneath them. And they're using you as their therapist, as I said in the beginning of this broadcast. So, you know, why are you sticking it out with someone? Uh, and by the way, what is the, well, the other thing is I need to know is what is the next level for you? But um, but anyway, I hope I've given you some insight on that question. I'm basically answering that for everybody. So thank you. Juliet says, question, what do you do when he says it's not great timing for him because things are weird in the world? He's terrified of falling in a relationship again. He's an INTJ. I'm an ENFP. You know what you say to him? 
You don't get my vagina. You don't get my vagina. You don't get my vagina until you figure your shit out. And you move on, Juliet, to a guy who isn't so fucking freaked out about what's going on in the world. Like, and if you're so freaked out on what's going on in the world, then go become a volunteer. You know, fly out to the Ukraine and take a gun and go help people. Become a volunteer if you're so worried about what's going on in the world. Because if you're not worried, if you're not focused on your own world, you can't, it's like the oxygen mask. You can't help others until you help yourself. So dude, fucking, if you want to go fix the problems of the world, become a politician maybe, go do something. But watching TV and being so obsessed with what the fuck's going on in the world is, is the definition of insanity. Because if you're not a pro solving the problem, then stop bitching about the problem. By the way, I'm projecting and going off on one of my usual rants. So, um, But then take the vagina off the, the, you know, the table, so to speak. Does that help, Juliet? I hope so. <laughs> All right. Queen says, question, what's your opinion on dating a, on a dating couple from different cultures in relationship? Do they work long term? Emotional maturity, blendable lifestyles, shared value and chemistry. If you have that, it doesn't matter what, you know, I mean, unless your cultures make your values different, makes your lifestyles different and makes your emotional maturity different. Absolutely. Um, look at my heritage is Turkish and the woman I'm looks like I might be dating is from Colombia, big time, different cultures. So it's, and I don't think it's going to be a problem because we operate as emotional grownups. By the way, if you operate as an adult in a relationship, if you operate as an adult in a relationship, you have a greater chance of success. By the way, all the books I recommend are listed below. All right. Thank you for your question. Oh, wow. Woof. Marianne says, personal question. You seem really revved up on what's going on. I'm going out to dinner with my friends tonight and I'm excited. Plus, I, listen, I'm revved up because I said this earlier. I look at all of you as a bunch of children, the way you date and the way you operate in the world. And I act very parental and I just happen to be a boisterous parental person. Now, that must mean that I, I listen. There's a bit of righteousness going on with me. I get that. I can be a little bit of a righteous son of a bitch. But I'm just a provocateur. I'm a wake-up call. What do I do in every video? I bring to your attention shit so you can do personal development work. Why do I always recommend the book, The Hoffman Process? The Hoffman Process to do a deep dive into healing childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas that cause human beings to be dysfunctional. Why do I yell and scream? It's because it's time to make changes in your life. If you're And if you are making the changes, bravo, bravo. And if you want to change your love life, schedule a discovery call with me. Join my group. Let's get, let's connect. I can make a difference. I got to tell you, I get calls every week from a client who's worked with me. Jonathan, I met a great guy. Jonathan, I met a great guy. Jonathan, I met a great guy. And they know the difference. Anyway, that's why I'm revved up. So thank you. Uh, Kit, Kitty Cat says, Jonathan, we love how you say it as it is. Thank you. Uh, Mimi says, there's nothing wrong with being passionate. Uh, Joy says, Columbia. Yeah, super sweet. Great fun couple. Uh, we'll see. Uh, she's definitely got my attention. That's for sure. All right. Uh Gene says, men have relationship tactics down, and unfortunately, we're not versed on the game plan. No, that's not true. Men are dysfunctional, and you guys just allow it. That's the big problem. Hey, we just got a super sticker. Thank you so much for the super sticker, $9.99. Many thanks, Jonathan. Have done all the work and read most of the books you recommend. Advice from other coaches. By the way, my heritage is Turkish. Uh, my Fulbright MA in Middle Eastern cuisine. Merci. <laughs> Meraba, Nusselsin, E. Gedjeler. Chokta Teshek Thank you so much. All right, folks. I think this will be a great place to wrap up for today. Listen, 
You want some support? Check out a link to a discovery call with me. Check out my membership group. Hit that like button if you're brand new to my channel and you got this far. Subscribe to my channel. I hope you've gotten value on this. Folks, have you gotten value from the work I share? Please let me know. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self love. I'm asking you to, I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. I want to thank Kitty Cat and Karen and FL and Joy and Mary Lou and uh, I can't pronounce your name. Pyman and beautiful, beautiful and Mary Ann and Brenda and Mimi and Sandra and Glenn and Jim and Jean and Ava and Juliet and oh uh, gosh. And Rihanna says, Jonathan, I love when you yell. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Folks, wishing you a super duper wonderful, fantastic evening. Be well. Take care. Have fun tonight.